Friday, October 3, 1913. When you are in any doubt as to the reality of spirit communion, think of the messages you have already received, and you will find that in all we have written we have preserved a clear purpose throughout. It is that we may help you, and through you others also, to understand how natural all is here, if wonderful also. Sometimes, when we look back upon our earth life, we feel a wistful longing, to make the way of those still there a little clearer and brighter, than was our own in our forward glances into the future life. We did not understand, and so we went on in uncertainty as to what really awaited us. Many, as we know, say that this is good, and yet, as we view things from our present vantage ground, we cannot agree that uncertainty is good when a definite goal is to be won. Certainty, on the other hand, gives decision and leads to courageous action, and if we may be given to implant, in just a few of Earth's sojourners, the certainty of life and brightness here, for those who fight the good fight well, we shall be amply repaid for our journeys hither from our own bright home in light. Now let us see if we can impress you to write a few words of the conditions which we found when we arrived here, the conditions, that is, of those who pass over here when they first arrive. They are not all of an equal degree of spiritual development of course, and, therefore require different treatment. Many, as you know, do not realize for some time the fact that they are what they would call dead, because they find themselves alive and with a body, and their previous vague notions of the after-death state are not, by any means, lightly thrown away. The first thing to do then, with such as those, is to help them to realize the fact that they are no more in the earth life, and, to do this, we employ many methods. One is to ask them whether they remember some friend or relative, and, when they reply that they do so but that he is dead, we try to enable them to see this particular spirit, who, appearing alive, should convince the doubter that he is really passed over. This is not always the case, for the ingrained fallacies are obstinate, and so we try another method. We take him to some scene on earth with which he is familiar, and show him those whom he has left behind, and the difference in his state and theirs. If this should fail, then we bring to his recollection the last experiences he underwent before passing, and gradually lead up to the time when he fell asleep, and then try to connect up that moment with his awakening here. All these endeavours often fail, more often than you would imagine, for character is built up year by year, and the ideas which go to help in this building become very firmly embedded in his character. Also we have to be very careful not to overtax him, or it would delay his enlightenment. Sometimes, however, in the case of those who are more enlightened, they realise immediately that they are passed into the spirit land, and then our work is easy. We once were sent to a large town where we were to meet with other helpers at a hospital to receive the spirit of a woman who was coming over. These others had been watching by her during her illness, and were to hand her over to us to bring away. We found a number of friends round the bed in the ward, and they all wore long dismal faces, as if some dire disaster was about to happen to their sick friend. It seemed so strange, for she was a good woman, and was about to be ushered into the light out of a life of toil and sorrow and, lately, of much bodily suffering. She fell asleep, and the cord of life was severed by our watching friends, and then, softly, they awoke her, and she looked up and smiled very sweetly at the kind face of one who leaned over her. She lay there perfectly happy and content until she began to wonder why these strange faces were around her in place of the nurses and friends she had last seen. She inquired where she was, and, when she was told, a look of wonder and of yearning came over her face, and she asked to be allowed to see the friends she had left. This was granted her, and she looked on them through the veil and shook her head sadly. If only they could know, she said, how free from pain I am now, and comfortable. Can you not tell them? We tried to do so, but only one of them heard, I think, and he only imperfectly, and soon put it away as a fancy. We took her from that scene, and, after she had somewhat gained strength, to a children's school, where her little boy was, and, when she saw him, her joy was too great for words. He had passed over some few years before, and had been placed in this school where he had lived ever since. Then the child became instructor to his mother, and this sight was a pretty one to see. He led her about the school and the grounds and showed her the different places, and his schoolmates, and, all the while, his face beamed with delight, and so did the mother's. We left her a while, and then, when we returned, we found those two sitting in an arbor, and she was telling him about those she had left behind, 
and he was telling her of those who had come on before, and whom he had met, and of his life in the school, and it was as much as we could do to tear her away, with a promise that she should return soon, and often, to her boy. That is one of the better cases, and there are many such, but others are otherwise. Now, while we waited for the mother who was talking with her son, we wandered over the grounds and looked at the various appliances for teaching children. One especially engaged my attention. It was a large globe of glass, about six or seven feet in diameter. It stood at the crossing of two paths, and reflected them. But as you looked into the globe you could see not only the flowers and trees and plants which grew there, but also the different orders from which they had been derived in time past. It was very much like a lesson in progressive botany, such as might be given on earth and deduced from the fossil plants of geology. But here we saw the same plants alive and growing, and all the species of them from the original parent down to the present representative of the same family. We learned that the task set for the children was, to consider this progression, up to this particular plant, or tree, or flower, actually growing in that garden and reflected in the globe, and then to try to construct in their minds, the further and future development of that same species. This is excellent training for their mental faculties, but the results are usually amusing. It is the same study which full-grown students are also at work upon, in other departments here, and is put by them to a practical end. One of them, thought it would be a useful method to help the children to use their own minds, and so, constructed the ball for their especial use. When they have thought out their conclusion, they have to make a model of the plant as it will appear after another period of evolution, and, fearful and wonderful some of those models are, and, as impossible as they are strange. Well, I must not keep you longer, so we will continue when you are able to write again. God bless you and yours. Good night.